It is the chapter seven practice test. Um, so the first problems are the graphing exponential and then stating domain and range. So number one, here's our graph. All right, so for these exponential graphs, for number one and number two, you guys have this set of points that you start with. So that B stands for the base. The base is pretty easy to spot. What you do is you find the exponent, so like you find the superscript up here, and you see what it's directly attached to. Whatever it's attached to, that's your base. That's what you use for these points right here. So our original, we have negative one. This is the reciprocal of the base. Like don't necessarily write it as a fraction like that. Just know it's the reciprocal. So since this is already a fraction, the reciprocal would just be five. Middle point is zero, one, and then one and the base. So those are your original points. You get them from the base right here. You can see there are three other things that are gonna change our points. Look up here in the exponent. So with these graphs, whatever is in the exponent is gonna change x, and it's gonna change it the opposite way of what it looks like it's going to do. So if you see an x plus three, it actually means you're gonna subtract three from your x values. So for our new values, I take negative one minus three, zero minus three, and one minus three. All right, and then anything else is gonna change the y. So if there's a number out front, that's gonna multiply by your y values. If there's a number in the back, it's gonna add or subtract, and they do exactly what they look like they're going to do. Y is never the opposite. So we start with this point. We start with five, the old y value. First you multiply it by four, and then you subtract one. So five times four minus one would leave us with 19. Same thing here, one times four minus one would leave us with three. And then one fifth times four, which is four fifths, minus one would be negative one fifth. Okay, so those are your three new points. We're gonna set up our graph over here. Uh, first thing that you should do is you should plot this dotted line. So whatever number is right here is gonna be a dotted line. Um, this is 19, so I'm gonna have to scale everything by five. So five, 10, 15, 20. So it'll be negative five. So you're gonna have a dotted line at negative one. So if you go to negative one, extend that, turn it into a dotted line. So make sure with these graphs that you always have a dotted line because it's gonna shape your graph. So then plot these points. So we have two, three, four. So negative four will be just about at 20, it's at 19. Negative three will be at three, so that's right about here. And then negative two will be just below the x-axis at negative one-fifth. So this one's super, super steep. And then all of a sudden it just turns around and gets practically horizontal like that. So that's your graph. Domain and range. These types, if it's the exponential graph like this, the domain is always all reals. And then for the range, what you do is you look at this dotted line and see where the graph is going relative to that dotted line. So our graph is above the dotted line, which has a value of negative one. So that's your domain and range. Number two is really similar. We've got y equals three and then times two raised to the x. So this one's a little bit more basic. It's got less extra numbers up here. So we start with these three points. So the original, we have negative one with the reciprocal of the base. So remember what I said about the base. You find the exponent, whatever it is directly attached to, that's your base. It's not always necessarily gonna be in parentheses, so don't use that as the only indicator. So two is our base, so the reciprocal would be one half, middle point is zero, one, and then third point is one and the base. So look up in our exponent, it's just an x. That means our x values are not going to change. So my x values actually stay exactly the way they were before. And the only other number up there, there's nothing back here. So the only other number is three. So if there's a number out front like this four, it means you're gonna multiply the y values. So one half times three is three halves, or 1.5. One times three is three, and two times three is six. So those are your three new points. We're gonna sketch out this graph Remember, the very first thing you want to plot is your dotted line. If there's no value right here, you assume that it's zero. So the default is zero, um, unless you've got a number at the ends there. So then plot these three points. We have negative one, positive one. We need to go up to six. So negative one and 1 1.5, zero and three, and then one, six. So this one kind of glides along this dotted line and then starts increasing as it moves through these points. All right, domain for any exponential graph is always all reals. 
the range for this graph. Remember, it's based on the dotted line. So my y values are above the dotted line, and the dotted line has a value of 0. All right, so those are our exponential. Uh, numbers 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 are all from 7, 2. And these are going to be solving equations that can get the same base. So here's our first one. So 8 and 16 can both be written as powers of 2. Um, don't be confused. It's not multiples, but it's powers. So 8 can be written as 2 to the third power. And then you still have an x minus 2 on the outside here. Uh, 16 can be written as 2 to the 4th power, so since it's a fraction, that would be 2 to the negative 4th power. So I get the same base. Make sure everything's completely simplified. So this 3 can distribute to those other two. So your exponent will be 3x minus 6, and then this exponent is just a negative 4. Technically, there's a 1 on the outside, but it would just be negative 4. So once you get it to this point, and only when you get it to this point, when the bases are the same, then you can take this and drop the bases and just set those exponents equal to each other like this. And then once you do that, it's just a kind of regular two-step equation. So I'm going to add the 6 to both sides. So negative 4 plus 6 would be 2. And then divide both sides by 3. So 2 divided by 3 leaves me with my answer of 2 thirds. And number 4 is a very similar type of problem. We've got 1 64th. And then our exponent is x minus 2. The right-hand side is 16 to the 3x plus 1. So same idea here. We need to get the same base. Uh, so 64 and 16, they can be traced all the way back to 2. And if you did that, you would get the right answer. Um, you can go a little bit bigger, though, and they can both be traced back to 4. So 64 is 4 to the third power. So since it's a fraction, that means it's 4 to the negative third power. And I have my x minus 2 on the outside. 16 is 4 to the second power. Uh, you could do, this would be 2 to the negative 6th, and this would be 2 to the 4th. And it would work that way, I promise. It's just a little bit better to deal with bigger numbers like this. So with this one, distribute the negative 3, and I'll have negative 3x plus 6 as my exponent. For this one, distribute the 2, and I will have 6x plus 2 as my exponent. Again, just like this one, now that my bases are the same and the exponents are completely simplified, I can take this, drop the bases, and just set my exponents equal. Okay, so I'm going to start by adding the 6x to the other side. So negative 3x plus 6x is 3x. And then I am going to, I'm sorry, I'm going to subtract that 6x. Sorry, sorry. So this would be a negative 9x. And then I'm going to subtract this 6. So 2 minus 6 would be negative 4. And then divide both sides by this negative 9. And negative 4 over negative 9 would be positive 4 ninths. That's your answer for number 4. All right, let's look at number 5. I know this is a tricky one because we only had a couple examples like this in the notes. When they tell you to write an exponential function, you always start with this. It's kind of like the bare bones equation. And then I gave you two points, so 0, 5, and 6, 320. So remember, whenever you have ordered pairs like this, they're x's and y's. Okay, so first thing you're going to do is take this first point and plug it into this equation. So plug in 0 for x, plug in 5 for y. So I have 5 equals a times b and then 0 for x. So one really nice thing about plugging in the 0 is that b to the 0 power is just equal to 1. So this is just a times 1, and that's a. So this tells us that my value of a is 5. So now for the second order pair, I have an x value, I have a y value, I now know a, so I can sub all of those things in here. So sub in, for this point, sub in 320 for y. I now know that a is 5. I haven't solved for b yet, that's what I'm about to do, but I have a value of x that is 6. Okay, and now we're solving for b. So we are going to divide both sides by 5. So 320 divided by 5 is 64 equals b to the 6th power. So this is saying some number raised to the 6th power gives us 64. So we take the 6th root, and that number ends up being 2. So 2 raised to the 6th power gives us 64. So now I know a, I know b. I'm going to sub them back in here. So I have y equals a is 5 times 2 to the x. Um, common question, you cannot multiply the 5 and the 2 because the 2 has an exponent, the 5 does not. 
according to PEMDAS, exponents come first before you would multiply. So this would be your final answer. Number six is kind of back to something like three and four. So we've got these numbers on each side that we have to write as a common base. The only difference here is this one's an inequality. Okay, so these ones 25 and 125 can each be traced back to an exponent of five. So 25 is five to the second. So that means this would be five to the negative second with an exponent on the outside. 125 is five to the third with an exponent on the outside. So just like I did with three and with four, I'm gonna take these exponents and distribute them. So distribute the negative two and I get four X plus two. Distribute this three and I get nine X plus three. So just like the equations, the only difference is an in inequality. Now that I have the same base and everything's simplified up, I can drop the bases. So it looks like this. Okay, so I start by subtracting 9x from both sides. So negative 4x minus 9x is negative 13x. And then I'm going to subtract the 2 from both sides. So it cancels from the left, and 3 minus 2 is 1. Okay, then divide both sides by this negative 13. So this is just an x. I divided by a negative, so I have to flip this inequality symbol. And this would be a negative 1 13th. All right, number 7. This is all of the log stuff. So this one is a pretty quick one. We are just taking this logarithmic form and writing it in exponential form. So the conversion works like this. The little subscript becomes the base for your exponential form. The number on the other side becomes the exponents. Then comes the equal sign, and then this number goes on the other side. So this would be your exponential form for that expression. Uh, for number eight, we're going backwards. So we have two to the seventh equals 128. So we're just going back and forth from what we were doing here. So log form always starts with the word log. The base of the exponential form becomes your little subscript right here. The number on the other side of the equals is what comes next. Then the equal sign and then the exponent gets written all by itself. So that is your logarithmic form. So just converting back and forth there. Uh, number nine, we've got a few of these that will kind of compare to what we were doing up here. So this, if we're trying to find log base four of 64, say we don't know what it's equal to, so we can turn it into exponential form, just like we were doing up here. So four becomes the base. The question mark over here is our exponent, then the equal sign, and then the 64. So what we're trying to find is this missing exponent that takes four to 64. So that answer would be three. So four to the third power gives us 64. So this is equal to three. We've got another one of those with number 10, actually two more, 10 and 11. So log base 25 of five, so same thing. We're like, what is this equal to? I don't know. So we turn this into exponential form as well. So 25 is your base. This missing piece over here is the exponent. That's what we're trying to find. Then the equal sign, and then this number. So this gets smaller. These are always a little tricky for people to remember. But anytime that the number gets smaller, it's always because we had a fraction exponent. Fraction exponents are the same as radicals, square roots, cube roots, fourth roots. So the root that takes us from 25 to 5 would be the square roots, or an index of 2. So this exponent would be a 1 half. So an exponent of 1 half is the same as taking a square root. Number 11, one more of these. So log base two of one over 128. So same thing, we don't know what this is equal to. We can convert this into exponential form. So two is our base. This unknown is our exponent. And then we set it equal to this number over here. So here's one thing we do know. If we go from a whole number to a fraction, we know for sure that our exponent's gonna be negative. And then two to 128, if we count it out, the exponents, 2 to the first, we've got 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So that is the seventh power. So since it's a fraction, it would be the negative seventh. And this is actually a good thing to look at up here. So hopefully that was kind of fresh in your mind. All right, number 12, moving on to something different here. We've got our graphs. Okay. 
Okay, so I want to compare. Log graphs are the inverse of exponential graphs. So here's number one. These are the points that you use for your exponential graph. So you use the inverse of that. You literally swap the x and y, and that's what you use for these logarithmic graphs. So we have the reciprocal of the base with negative one. We have one with zero, and then we have the base with one. So those are your points that you use for logarithmic graphs every time. They're just the inverses of the exponential graphs. So our base is pretty easy to spot here. It's just always the little subscript right after the word log. Okay, so set up these original points. The reciprocal of the base would be 1 fourth with negative 1. This middle point is 1 0. And then the base with 1. So those are my original points for a log graph. For my new points for x, I go into the parentheses. If there are no parentheses, x does not change. Okay, so this, I have x plus 3. With x, I always do the opposite of what it looks like it's going to do. So an x plus 3 means that I subtract from my x values. So if I have 1 fourth minus 3, um, this is one where it wouldn't be the worst idea to turn it into a decimal. So 1 fourth minus 3, I'd have negative 2.75. That'll probably make it easier to graph. Okay, y value. This 1 minus 3 is negative 2, and 4 minus 3 is 1. So now the other two numbers affect my y. So this multiplies the y value, and then I subtract. So I start with negative 1. Negative 1 times 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Then this one, 0 times 2 minus 2 is negative 2. And last one, 1 times 2 minus 2 is 0. So those are your three new points. That's what's going to get plotted. So set up your coordinate system over here. Exponential graphs, like number one and number two, always have a horizontal dotted line. Logarithmics, everything flips, so these ones are actually going to have a vertical dotted line, and it's going to be based on this number right here. Okay, so this looks like it should be three, but remember x always does the opposite, so it's actually going to be negative three. So with these log graphs, you should always have a vertical dotted line, and it's always the opposite of the number that you see right here. So once you have that vertical line to shape your graph, plot these points. So we have negative 2.75, so almost the line, and then down here at negative 4. Negative 2, negative 2 would be right here, and 1, 0 would be over here. Okay, so this dotted line is here so that you can shape your graph so it's pretty much vertical, comes to these points, and then starts slowly bending upwards like that. Okay, domain and range as well. So domain range. So remember, everything's flipped from the exponential functions that we did for number one and number two. This time the range is the one that's always all reals, and this time the domain is what's based on the dotted line. So domain is my x values. My graph is to the right of that dotted line, and the dotted line is at negative three. Okay, so that would be your domain for number 12. All right, so moving on to the next set where we're solving these logarithmic equations and inequalities. Number 13, we've got log base 4 of 5x plus 1 equals 2. Okay, so 13 and 14 are the two different types of logarithmic graphs. If you only have a log on one side, it's a totally different technique from if you have a log on both sides. So number 13 is one where you only have a log on one side. If that's the case, you have to convert it into exponential form in order to solve. So this number right here becomes the base of your exponential form. The number over here becomes your exponent, then the equal sign, and then what you have on the inside here. So just like we were doing with you know, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, you convert it into exponential form and then it becomes just a totally ordinary equation. So 4 squared is 16 and then we solve. So oops, subtract the 1 from both sides. So 16 minus 1 is 15 and then divide both sides by 5. So 15 divided by 5 is 3. With this logarithmic stuff, you always have to check your answer to make sure it's not extraneous. This expression inside the log has to be positive. So I'm going to plug the 3 back in. 5 times 3 plus 1, that's positive. So this answer is totally fine, not extraneous. All right, number 14. 14 is an example where we have a log on both sides. So this is a different technique than the one that we just used. Okay, so 
different from number 13. If you have a log on both sides, you can just drop the log. So if you have a log on both sides and that log is completely simplified, I should add that in too, then you can just drop the logs. So this is a quadratic. In order to solve quadratics, we get everything on one side and we solve by factoring. So I'm gonna subtract the two x over to the left. I'm also gonna subtract the two, so negative six minus two. So we get everything on one side, and then like I said, we're gonna solve by factoring. So this factors down to x times x. My numbers are supposed to be multiplying to a negative eight and adding to a negative two. So that would be negative four and positive two. All right, so set those each equal to zero. When I set x minus four equal to zero, I get four. When I set x plus two equal to zero, I get negative two. So I have to check my two answers. I can plug the four back in. Four squared minus six is positive. Two times four plus two is positive. So this answer works. Negative two, negative two squared minus six comes out to be a negative number. And it does over here as well. So this is extraneous. 15, that log base five of x is greater than two. So these next ones are inequalities. So with this one, whenever you start with an inequality, you have to make sure that this is gonna be positive. Okay, so very first thing you do is take whatever's on the inside of the log and set it greater than zero. Okay, so this expression right here, whatever it is, it has to be greater than zero. This inequality has nothing to do with this inequality. It just happens to be the same, that's a coincidence. Whatever is inside the log has to be positive, just like whatever's inside the square roots has to be positive. So we start with this. Then we actually solve. This one is more like number 13, where it has a log on just one side. So if it has a log on just one side, then you would set it up like um, an exponential form. So we start with the five raised to the second power, and then the x would be on the other side. I'm leaving the inequality blank for a second because this is a little bit tricky. The way that the inequality points always has to be the same with regards to the variable. So see how the inequality is opening at the variable right now? We have to make sure it's opening at the variable right here. Okay, so this is a 25. So this says 25 is less than x, which is the same as saying that x is greater than 25. Okay, so we combine these. We look for the overlap. If x is bigger than zero and bigger than 25, it's just the same as saying that it's bigger than 25. Because this completely overlaps this. So you don't have to worry about specifically stating that x is greater than zero. Because if it's bigger than 25, you automatically know it's bigger than zero. All right, let's look at 16. This one's similar, except it's got um, a less than. So you'll see how that ends up comparing. So this one, again, just has a log on both sides. It's an inequality, so your very first step is you have to take that expression on the inside and make sure it's positive. So remember, this is always greater than zero. It has nothing to do with this symbol right here. So I start by subtracting that one from both sides, and then I divide both sides of the inequality by three. So I start with that. Next, I actually go and solve my inequality. So I turn it into exponential form. So two becomes the base. This number by itself over here becomes the exponent. And then I have 3x plus 1 on the other side. So pay attention to the inequality. Right now the inequality is pointing away from my variable. So you have to still make sure that it's pointing away from your variable. So we'll solve this. This is a 16. So subtract 1 from both sides. So this would be 15 is greater than 3x. And then divide both sides by 3. So 15 divided by 3 and then the x would be by itself. So just to make our answer easier, flip this back. So if five is greater than x, it means x is less than five. So these two, being bigger than this number and smaller than this number, that's where you end up in between these two numbers. And whenever you're in between, you set up a three-piece inequality. Okay, so you start with this. So that's you take this and flip it and then combine it with this one. So this would be your final answer for number 16. All right, number 17, we're setting up something sort of similar, except for 17, we have log on both sides. Okay, so again, anything on the inside has to be positive. So 5x has to be greater than zero. 
30 is just a number and we know it's greater than zero, so we don't have to do anything there. Divide both sides by five, and zero divided by five is still just zero. So we start with this. This one is more like number 14 for the equations. So since this one has a log on both sides and there's only one log and it's completely simplified, we just drop the logs. So we just have five X is less than 30. All right, divide both sides by five to solve this. So I have X is less than six. So this turns into a three piece. If I have to be bigger than zero and smaller than six, that means I have to be in between. So write this one in reverse order and then attach it to this one. And that would be your answer for number 17. All right, for 18 and 19, a lot of these for really 18 through 21, we need to use some properties and I'm gonna write those properties right here. So that's our first property, that's the product property. Second is the quotient property. And the third is our power property. So we're gonna be using these properties for 18 through 21. Okay, so for number 18, we have these two values. We have log base 12 of three is approximately equal to 0 0.4421. We also have that log base 12 of seven is approximately equal to 0 0.7831. So using these and using these properties, we can answer the next few questions. So this one wants log base 12 of seven over three. So this one right here looks exactly like this. We've got log base 12 of seven over three. So using this, we can rewrite it like this. So it becomes log base 12 of seven minus log base 12 of three. So we have these values right here. So log base 12 of seven is this. So we put in the 0 0.89, I'm sorry, 7831 minus, and then this right here is this value. So 0 0.4421, and you would just plug that into a calculator. So 0 0.7831 minus 0.4421, and we get 0 0.3410. So that would be your answer for number 18. Uh, for number 19, we're doing something similar. This one wants log base 12 of 63. So this one, we can turn it into a power. Um, I'm sorry, a product like this. So 63, we can write it as 9 times 7. So we kind of have it written out as x times y. And then for 9, we can write 9 as three squared, so that we're bringing it back to the three and to the seven. So first property, we write it out like this. So right now it looks like this. We wanna write it like this. So we can do log base 12 of three squared plus log base 12 of seven. Okay, now this, this exponent right here looks like this. So I wanna write it like this. So this, the two that was right here, comes out front as a two, so I do two times log base 12 of three, and then the rest of it stays the same. Okay, so now I know this, I know this, those are the values given to me up here. So I have two times, and then this value, 0 0.4421, plus, and then this value, which is 0 0.7831. So I plug that into a calculator. So two times, 0.4421 plus 0.7831. And that gives me 1.6673. Okay, that would be your final answer for number 19.